beautiful sign of service to one another. Uh, I in, uh, so I, now uh, let us turn to worship. I invite you to stand and read the call to worship with me. Um, please join me in the bold face type. God of the shadows, sharing our pain and our tears and our struggle, draining the cup of what it is to be human, we watch with you. God of the night, sharing our fears and our prayers and our restlessness, measuring the road between living and dying, we watch with you. God of the dawn, sharing the questions we never dare to ask, yearning in us for the light of your glory, watch with you. Please be seated. Let us pray. Holy God, we are caught in the tension of light and shadow, death and resurrection. You spoke the world into being. You illuminated the universe by your very speech, then filled the void with life. Indeed, you have filled the void of darkness and death the empty promises of the abyss with new life and new creation. We look to see you in this space between the world and the kingdom, longing for the fulfillment of your word in the work of the Holy Spirit and the reign of Christ our creator and king. Amen. And now we begin our readings. The Last Supper. Long ago, God had rescued the people of Israel from death and led them out from Egypt into a land of their own. They had kept the first Passover then, and Moses had given clear instructions about what they should eat and how they should cook it, both for that day and for the many annual Passover celebrations to follow. Jesus planned to share his last Passover meal with his own close friends, his disciples. On the first of the days of unleavened bread, the day they prepare the Passover sacrifice, his disciples asked him, 
where do you want us to go and make preparations so you can't eat the Passover meal? He directed two of his disciples, go into the city. A man carrying a water jug will meet you. Follow him. Ask the owner of whichever house he enters. The teacher wants to know, where is my guest room where I can eat the Passover meal with, his, with my disciples? He will show you a spacious second story room, swept and ready. Prepare for us there. Just before the Passover feast, Jesus knew that the time had come to leave this world to go to God. Having loved his dear companions, he continued to love them right to the end. It was supper time. The evil one by now had Judas, son of Simon the Iscariot, firmly in his grip, all set for the betrayal. Um, before we sing this uh, hymn, it comes from the Taizé tradition, which is something we haven't done a lot of here. Uh, we sing, you'll notice we sing it a number of times, and that'll be the case with Ubi Caritas later. And the reason for that is that it is intended to be sung prayer. Uh, they actually come from a youth movement that began in Taizé, France earlier, um, I'm not, I, 40 years ago maybe, um, and it inspired a lot of teenagers actually to come and sing these chants together over and over and over again. Um, so it's with a spirit of prayer that we uh, sing these phrases uh, together. Sure, sure. Thank you. 
Friends, this is the joyful feast of the people of God, even on this night. People will come from the north and south and east and west and will come together to sit at this table. This is our Savior's table and Jesus invites all who trust in him to take part in this meal. So come, whoever you are, whatever you've done, whatever you've hoped, whatever you've dreamed, whatever you've lost, you are welcome here. Let us pray. Creator God, we thank you for bread and for the fruit of the vine. God of freedom, we thank you that you do not leave us in bondage, but act in power to liberate us from all oppression. We thank you that Christ, acting in courage and faith, has won for us the victory over sin and death. May this bread and this wine be signs of our renewed covenant with you, and may we ever be faithful until at the last we drink wine anew with Christ in your heavenly realm. Amen. On the night of his arrest, Jesus took bread, and after giving thanks to God, he blessed it and he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body broken for you. Whenever you do this, remember me. And after supper, he also took the cup, saying, This is the new covenant sealed in my blood. Whenever you do this, remember me. And Paul goes on to write that for as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim our Savior's death until he comes again. Friends, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. And we will be serving communion by intinction, uh, coming up to take a piece of the bread and dip in the cup and returning to our seats. Rebecca. <laughs>
Let us pray. Almighty God, ruler of the universe, we thank you for your mighty acts of deliverance when you enable us to cross over from despair to hope, from brokenness to wholeness, from death to life. We thank you for the deep love of Jesus, which moved him to risk himself for the redemption of humanity, and for the, gr the grace we experience in receiving these symbols of the life he gave. Through lives given over in commitment to you, make us worthy of this great love. Amen. The foot washing. Jesus knew that God had put him in complete charge of everything, that he came from God and was on his way back to God. So he got up from the supper table, set aside his robe, and put on an apron. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the feet of his disciples, drying them with his apron. When he got to Simon Peter, Peter said, Master, you wash my feet? Jesus answered, you don't understand now what I'm doing, but it will be clear enough to you later. Peter persisted, you're not going to wash my feet ever. Jesus said, if I don't wash you, you can't be part of what I'm doing. Master, said Peter, not only my feet then, wash my hands, wash my head. Jesus said, if you've had a bath in the morning, you only need your feet washed now, and you're clean from head to toe. My concern, you understand, is holiness, not hygiene. So now you're clean, but not every one of you. He knew who was betraying him. That's why he said, not every one of you. After he had finished washing their feet, he took his robe, put it back on, and went back to his place at the table. Then he said, do you understand what I have done to you? You address me as teacher and master and rightly so, that is what I am. So if I, the master and teacher, wash your feet, you must now wash each other's feet. I've laid down a pattern for you. What I've done, you do. I'm only pointing out the obvious. A servant is not ranked above his master. An employee doesn't give orders to the employer. If you understand what I'm telling you, act like it and live a blessed life. The commandment. Jesus spoke further to all of us. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, 
you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. As a way of expressing our willingness to be Jesus' servants and servants to one another, and because washing each other's feet is a hard thing to do within the context of a worship service, we will receive a sign of water as I make a mark of a cross with water on your forehead, uh, both um, a, a, renewal of a renewal of our baptism and our call to live and as Christ's disciples and follow in his way, and also a mark of the water that Jesus used to wash the disciples' feet. invite you to come forward as you're able and feel called.
And now a blessing for staying awake with the disciples, or perhaps better than they did, <laughs> this night. Even in slumber, even in dreaming, even in sorrow, even in pain, awake, awake, awake my soul to the one who keeps vigil at all times for you. And may the love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and as we walk through this holy week. Amen.